Welcome to Denver 7 and Altitude Sports coverage of the Denver Nuggets 2023 Champions Parade and Rally. Presented by Toyota, visit Denver and the city of Denver. I'm Jessica Porter, joined by Vic Lombardi and Chris Marlowe. The party is getting started. The parade has started. All 53 trucks are on the road. The team is ready to get this started. They've been waiting the last few days to finally celebrate with their fans, their city. I have chills because this is really a moment in history for the Denver Nuggets and the, and the city. Jessica, this is a dream for me to be here. Born and raised in this city, following this team all my life. The fact that we're sitting here about to help the viewers navigate a parade, Chris, it's surreal. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out, is it better that you're in the parade, riding in the trucks, or is it better to be out here with all the folks and all the people paying tribute to the team that has kind of won our hearts. It's a, a tough call. I'm and, definitely proud just to be a part of it. Well, and the fact that, you know, when you saw in that open, there has been five decades of getting close, but not close enough. <laughs> and that's what we've done. Here we are. We did it. Well, let's go out to the streets. Denver 7's Tony Kovaleski out at 17th and Wazi. Tony, the trucks are right behind you. I'm sure the crowd is pumped. Jessica, it's been amazing. We've seen Christian Brown go through here, Mayor Hancock, many of the players, lots of champagne, lots of cigars, everybody having fun. Let's go over here and see what we got. Representative Leslie Herod having some fun. Denver firefighters having some fun. Clearly a celebration. Players going through, city leaders, uh, and the crowd. How about some Let's Go Nuggets? Unbelievable. More people coming through. It's been about 10 minutes of driving through. We counted there's going to be about 70 different cars coming in. We're looking to see who will be in the next group. It's slowing down here, but I got to tell you, there are eight to 10 people deep here at 17th and Wazi. Uh, we're looking forward to, obviously, Nikola Jokic and the others. He's going to be in the last fire truck coming through. Let's see what we can catch up to right here. Can you hear the crowd? Can you hear the fun? It is a party here. Everybody locked in and loaded and celebrating. Now there's candy. We're going to toss it back to you guys. They're making their way to Civic Center Park. And the party has officially started. Oh my gosh, we definitely needed the champagne goggles again today. Thank you, Tony. Let's go out to Katie Wingy. She's on a fire truck, just left Ball Arena. Katie, how's it going out there? All right, guys, we have rounded the corner. The parade has officially started. I am hanging out with KCP and his family. Aaron Gordon is his family. The cigars are out already. They are enjoying themselves. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to keep a close eye on this truck to keep you guys updated on how the celebrations are happening because it's already pretty lit. Look at all the trains. So many Nuggets fans taking it all in, getting a chance to see this championship team whenever they can. It's unbelievable. This is just the beginning of this parade. Just the beginning. I'll send it back to you guys. You can barely hear the crowd is so loud. What do you do? Do you get back on the train or do you just keep celebrating? I was on one of those trucks last year during the avalanche parade. And just so you know, Jessica, when we talk to them, they're not going to hear a word no, you're saying. They're not. So it's so loud along the route and it gets bigger and bigger as you get to Broadway. Once they get to Broadway, it'll be about 30 to 40 people deep. I guess we don't have to say anymore, can you hear the crowd? Can, <laughs> can anybody hear the crowd? Yes, we can hear the crowd. It's massive. It's very, very loud. It is undeniable. And you know, this celebration is just as much for the fans and the families as well as the veterans. Let's get out to Lionel Bienvenu. He is with Bill Hanslick in downtown Denver on the parade route. Looks like we also got a shot of Tony Kovaleski out there. 
He's following DeAndre Jordan, oh got up goodness. a truck already. <laughs> that was predictable. <laughs> Did not take long at all. He's got a bottle of champagne in his hand. <laughs> I think that's, is, yeah. that just shows DeAndre yeah. Jordan is a veteran. Yes. He has, this is his first NBA title. Yeah. And he wants to walk among the people. Why I think not? It's great. He's as big as a truck. Why not? Just go there. <laughs> he doesn't need to be on the truck at all. That's such an incredible moment. The fans are going absolutely wild. They are loving every single moment of this. Let's go back out to Lionel Bienvenu and Bill Hamlet. Lionel, what are you guys seeing out there? I mean, it is crazy. The fans, the players. <laughs> Sounds like Lionel is having some. is going absolutely ballistic out here. I mean, Christian Brown, though, right? Christian Brown. Championship in high school. Kansas National Championship, and then NBA in champion in five years. That's not bad. Who we got on this truck? Oh, Dan Shaminsky and his kids, the trainer. Right. Trainer of the Nuggets. Well, I mean, look at these fans, Bill. Let's get his Let's Go Nuggets chant for these fans. Let's go Nuggets! 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 Woo! Felipe! Felipe! Well, but yeah, everybody's having a great time. Look at the kitties! Look at the kitties! Yeah. Trainers! Oh, wow! You guys are awesome. I know, Hanson, you should be on a truck. We, no. These are my guys right here. These guys right here. They're, they're it. They get the job done. Keep everybody healthy, physically fit. They really, well, let's just say they made Nikola Jokic, right? Yeah. That, they got it done. Look at their kids. You guys having fun? You guys having fun? Woo! All right, so Bill, apparently you're Mike's the only one working. All right, thanks, guys. You're having way too much fun out there. I've never seen <laughs> a crowd like this downtown. It's almost impossible to hear anything. This is the perfect day for a PTO day, but I suspect there's probably a lot of suspicious sick calls happening sure. right now. Why not? I think Lionel's learning what we know already. Hanslick sometimes forgets he's on television and starts going stream of conscious. He forgets, he's just like talking to people out there. And when he forgets what he's going to say, he goes, let's go Nuggets, let's go Nuggets. He doesn't know if he's supposed to be presenting or celebrating. Well, you know what, though? Bit of both. You know, Bill Hanslick, and again, this is why it's for those players who came before who built the foundation. Bill Hanslick had the unfortunate opportunity, if you want to call it, of coaching that 11-win team. It was the worst team in Nuggets history, one of the worst teams in NBA history, and they came from those ashes and built what they have today. Yeah, I think that's one of the neat things about your tees and the video that we put up that it hasn't been all great for the Denver Nuggets. They've had issues going forward, uh, certainly, as you go along, you, you can you hear that? You, you establish some pain, so when you get to the top of the mountain, you feel great. And I think that's the best thing about this. And you know, you heard Coach Michael Malone say, we want more. He wants to create a dynasty. I could definitely, uh, I want more of this. I could do this again next year. Well, I'm, I'm going to go the opposite approach with that. I, I'll, I'll be a, I don't care what happens from this day forward. My life feels complete after getting to the mountaintop. That's the, I'll, I'll feel different next year, but right now, sure. I don't care. You know, I'm going to agree with Jessica on this. You can have your championship. I think there's more in store for the Denver Nuggets. I see the Denver Nuggets 
in the same position that the Golden State Warriors were back in like 2013, 14, 15. They got a transcendent player in, in There's uh, Steph right Curry. There. Uh, they got Curry, and then they built around him. They put all the pieces together. I could see the Nuggets winning two, three, maybe four more championships. There's Nicola with the uh, with the Larry O'Brien trophy. He's got the MVP trophy. He's on the same bus as, uh, I believe, Coach Malone and some of that staff. Let's go back out to Lionel Bienvenu and Bill Hanslick. They're on the ground there. Guys, it looks like Christian Brown is off the fire truck, <laughs> sprinting through the crowd. <laughs> All he does is win, 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 no matter what. You know, he, he won a he won a pair of high school championships. I think three, three. actually. Three, three high school championships. championships. He won college championships, Just and that was first year. year in the NBA. Boom. He's yeah. a winner. Yeah, he's got five in the last seven years. That's a that's a pretty good record. He is a wonderful young player. He's going to get better and better as things go along, and he's going to be an important part, a more important part uh, going forward as this Denver Nuggets team tries to repeat next that, season. That was KCP visiting with uh, Katie Wingy. We'll bring you all those interviews throughout the course of this parade because it's going to take a while. I didn't realize K K KCP is kind of a character. Oh my <laughs> there are more than 50 fire trucks and over 70 cars, vehicles yep. combined in this parade. That's a large parade. <laughs> Let's go to Katie Wingy. She's with Contavious Caldwell Pope on the fire truck celebrating Guys, uh, what do you guys have in your hands out there? You guys got the Good. champagne bottle? Uh, that's going to be in the part of history. Uh, uh, back to KCP who just shotgunned a beer that was thrown to him from the fans. You finally get your parade. Ah, uh, it's just, uh, I'm overwhelmed. Uh, there's so many people out here. I don't even know what to say, man. I'm just going to enjoy it and have fun with it. Is it what you expected? It is. A little bit more, like, I actually live downtown, and I ain't seen this many people. <laughs> so it, it, I'm, it's just unexpected right here, man. I, I'm excited that everybody come to cheer us on and just enjoy us, man. Look at the crowd, man. It's crazy. Uh, first ever championship, and I'm just enjoying to be in the part of history. How does it feel to be part of the group that brought this group, this community together like this? Oh, it feels good. Like I said, man, just. It's been 47 years since they won one, and just to be a part of that history, it feels great. You can hit it fast, man. I, I love it. I, I love it being. I love being here, man. Unbelievable fans. Listen to them. Listen to them. Yeah, man. Oh man. Uh, do you hear the crowd out there? That is absolutely incredible. I mean, fans came out here to celebrate this team. I think it's still surreal for them to see the players actually in the crowd, on the streets, giving high fives. Our, our radio booth, Jessica, set up at 5 a.m. this morning, Altitude Sports Radio, and there are already over 500 people just setting up themselves to watch <laughs> the rally. You know, I told this story on the air the other day, but for people that didn't hear it, at KCP, Obviously, he won an NBA championship with the LA Lakers in 2020 and now has another one. I asked him about that 2020, what he remembers for, about it, and he said, I never got a parade because it was in the COVID right. era. Yeah. They didn't have a parade back then. So this is special for KCP, and he is relishing every minute of it. Well, he should because he was an integral part yeah. of this team. Key player, timely shots, yeah. big steals. Great leadership. And, and, and he motivated the boys. He wore his Lakers NBA championship oh, ring wow. for select games. He wore it the final game five mm. in the locker room. Michael Porter Jr. tried it on. They're all looking at it, <laughs> glancing over. So it served as a motivating force. Oh, yeah. They all want one, and they got one. This is an incredible day. Let's go back out to Veronica Acosta. She's at 17th and Champa. Veronica. You know, we're starting to get the fire trucks come by, Jessica, and this crowd is just ecstatic to be here. So many of them, lifelong Nuggets fan. We have a ton of kids out here. I mean, take a listen at this crowd. They are just so happy to be here as every single one of these fire trucks go by. I mean, we have seen Rocky and we have seen the beers start to fly. We've also seen the shooters start to fly. So you know the party has definitely started out here near 17th and Champa. I've even seen some grown men, you know, with tears coming down their face because they are 
like I mentioned, lifelong Nuggets fans. They just can't believe that the day finally came. They are all, again, just so, so happy to be here. And I'll throw this out there. I'll let you guys know. We saw Rocky, and he is definitely pumping up the crowd. He passed us about five minutes ago. A lot of these fans just, again, so happy to be here. You can probably barely hear me over them. Take a look at that. They are all just so happy, so reminiscent of what we saw last year. And, I mean, these barricades could come down if they wanted to because of how many fans are here and how happy they all are to celebrate the Nuggets today. They just keep getting louder and louder as the morning goes by. Jessica, I'm going to send it back to you. We're going to keep looking for some of the most excited fans out here as the morning goes on. Veronica, thank you. We saw Christian Brown on the fire truck with the wrestling championship belt. Maybe that's his key to success. I'm getting texts from friends that are out there in the uh, street saying that some fans are openly weeping. They're, they're, they're crying in the streets. And, 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 and you know, the other thing that we have to take into account, there was a forecast of rain this morning and hopefully that yep. stays away. The sun shined at the perfect time. I don't think I've seen the sun in Denver for 45 days. My daughter just texted me and asked me, are you wearing sunscreen, Dad? It's sunny out there. I said, yeah, where are the clouds? Where is the rain? The Nuggets and Nikola Jokic have scared them away. It's I, all good. I love it. This is exactly what we need. I feel like almost every game for the last three weeks had yeah. some sort of thunderstorm, yeah. no matter where we were, whether we were here in Denver or even in Miami. And now it's just a perfect day. It is absolutely beautiful. The fans are going wild. The music is pumped. And it is great to see those fire trucks out there. Where has Rocky been, though? I'm surprised we haven't seen more of him, Rocky, our super mascot. Rocky's the first one off. He's leading the charge. He's sort of like the fullback of this parade, yeah, Rocky, opening up holes in there. So Rocky's in there. You know what I was thinking would be really interesting? Can you imagine if the Nuggets and Avalanche won in the same the, season. What would you would you have a well, dual just, parade? Or? I don't know. How uh, what's the time interval? It would have ended around the same time because the Vegas Knights I won know. their, it won been the, the same night after. Week. Back yes. to back parades. Yeah. Then yeah. On different days. We'd really be emotional needing some help after a week like that. Vic would be, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> well, Katie Wingy, she is out on the fire truck with Aaron Gordon. Let's listen oh, in. Oh, man of the people. <laughs> AG, I was just talking about how you're the man of the people, signing autographs for everybody. After the game, you're running through the streets of Denver. How does it feel to be here now? Oh, this is amazing. This is unreal. I never, I never imagined this in my whole life. This is an unreal feeling. It's love, yo, look, it's love, it's love. It's love, yo, come on, come on, where is love, come on, come on. It's love, it's love, what's up, gang? What's up, gang? Hey, turn up, turn me up. Here. That's what's up, man. Yeah. I, I just tell you what, uh, Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray better watch out because now it is Aaron Gordon's time to be the most popular nugget in his history. No, not enough is said about how Aaron Gordon refined his game during that press conference last season when they got eliminated by the Golden State Warriors. I listened to him and he said, I have a lot of work to do. And he spent the offseason working on his craft and you saw the effects of it in the playoffs. A, a perfect fit for the Denver Nuggets. Yes. So crucial. Right, take a he, here he goes. This is amazing. This is amazing. He was the odds-on favorite to remove his shirt first, and there it is. No doubt about it. <laughs> that is just incredible. You know, when I was in Miami, I spoke to Bruce Brown's coach, uh, Laranega, from yes. the University of Miami. Jim he had Laranega. nothing but great things to say about Bruce Brown. And Bruce Brown actually called during our interview to talk to the coach. And I thought it was just great, the kind of relationship that he still has with his college coach. It just shows how down-to-earth Bruce Brown is. Now, he's the only question mark going into this offseason from the core of this team because yep. he's got a player option. But man, 
you can't overvalue what he meant to this squad. Yeah, I think they can figure out a way to keep him. They'll work with him. He says he wants to be in Denver. Yes. We'll see. But I think Bruce Brown, I have a name for him. He's the most charming nugget. <laughs> he, he's just always smiling. He, he loves to go out and have some fun. Uh, it's all good. Tony um, Kowaleski speaking with Coach Malone. Hell yeah. Coach Malone's going to have a lot to say here when you get to the rally. I have the honor of introducing Coach Malone to the crowd. Listen to him. Oh, yeah, he's playing it up already. Is that him up there? Yes. Well, how's yes. Tony going to interview him then? I want to know. He was going to He's going to, like, jump up. <laughs> Hopefully, hey, Coach Malone has Coach a voice Malone. after that. You know what's crazy, everybody? Are we having a good time? Yes, we are. Oh, here goes the voice. Are you having fun? Are we going to be back here next year? Hell yes! Hell yes! You heard it from Coach Malone. We're going to be back here next year. We are eight years to the day. Eight years ago today, Michael Malone was introduced as the Nuggets head coach. A phenomenal job. A coach of the year yeah. type job. Pushed all the right buttons, got the Nuggets in the right place, and uh, He's a keeper as a coach, for sure. And, and one virtue that the Nuggets possess, and the reason he's still a coach after eight years, there's no patience in the game yeah. anymore, right? There's no diligence. There's no, let's take time for the, the squad to ferment. He's a big reason the Nuggets are here. He established a culture. Key players got hurt along the way. Those players came back, and here we are. And let's talk about that culture. Coach Malone has always been saying, you know, don't feel sorry for yourself. Let's move forward. Let's keep going. But they also have this culture of brotherhood yeah. that I haven't seen in any other team in the NBA right now. You know, Jessica, you said it best. Uh, Malone has the rare traits. He is a coach not afraid to kick a player in the pants or kiss a player on the mouth. He's that kind of coach. <laughs> Well, there's that. I just love the way he's got the two most important players on the team on his side. And if you look, that's why they are holding up the trophy. Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray, Nikola Jokic, uh, what is it, Michael Malone. Look at that. Jokic and Jamal David Murray Joker getting with the Larry O'Brien trophy, the dynamic duo. It looks like his little, uh, Jokic's little girl is there too. I love yeah. that moment at the celebrations at the end of the game on Monday night where he accepted MVP with his daughter, kind of stole the show. She's still in the show again today. I mean, just beautiful to see them celebrating with their families and it just <laughs> incredible morning out here. <laughs> the sun is shining championship hat is on. Can you imagine when she's 15, 16 years old and looks back at that video right there? How do you top that? <laughs> you don't. You don't. It's just they, they include their families. You know, being with the Nuggets all year, you've seen it, Chris. Yeah. Each player has is protected by their families, and they yes. go with them to road games. Every road game. Uh, Jamal Murray's family was there. Nicole Jokic's family. KCP's. Aaron Gordon's. They traveled with them. Yes. All of them. And they're very supportive of their kids. They're 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 the loved ones. And and, and now you see where that support goes. Let's go out to Danny New at Colfax and Broadway and check out how fans are reacting there. Jess, thankfully I heard you there. I was worried it'd be too loud. What's up? You've seen my face. Now let's never see it again because we got a parade coming through. But I mean, honestly, I mean, Jess, I was jealous of you because you were in Argentina during the World Cup this year. And I was like, I want to go to a really fun all-out parade like this, an all-out celebration. We got people sitting on traffic lights on the side of the street trying to watch the parade as the police officers come through right now. If you can see them all, everybody has to wave at the camera. You understand. This is exciting. We've had so many people come up to the camera and be like, am I on TV? Uh-oh, you know what? I'm seeing the man of the hour right now. Rocky is making his way through, fist pumping in the crowd right now. Oh my gosh, so many of these kids are so excited right now to see Rocky. I don't know if you noticed, but a lot of people are holding up face signs. There have been a lot of Michael J Michael P. Jordan, sorry, Michael Porter Jr. <laughs> and Aaron Gordon face signs that people are holding up right now. Uh, and Rocky is starting to throw some t-shirts. You know, that's going to get everybody very excited. I don't know if you can see the, by the, Sh the Cheyenne place sign, there's a guy in a Jamal Murray jersey standing uh, using a traffic light as his balance right now to keep him going. We got people by the Civic Center, RTD stations, all just 
standing in a giant crowd as Rocky makes his way through. That's the sound of a parade, everybody. And here comes the hype squad as well in a fire truck. Oh man, does anyone get people more excited than Rocky? This is incredible. Okay, I'm gonna toss back to you guys as this parade keeps going through while I can still hear myself talk. Jess, okay. back to you. Thank you, Danny. This is also an incredible moment for Rocky, who is, you know, just a beloved mascot. I was listening to Altitude Sports yesterday, and Mayor Michael Hancock talked about how when he was going to games back in the 80s, he would come to the games just to see Rocky. <laughs> Such a valid point. There was an era of Nuggets basketball yeah. where he was the main attraction. He was, he was the entertainment. He was the game. He was the main attraction. And luckily for the team, they became the main attraction with him as still part of the show. Quick question for you. Yes. What, what does this win do for the Nuggets in the eyes of the NBA in terms well, of stature? I can tell you this, Christopher. They're going to be playing on Christmas Day this year. Yeah. They right. won't be snubbed this year, right? No. What's it going to do in the eyes of the NBA? Well, one thing we have to understand about the National Basketball Association, it's not just an American sport anymore. It is a universal sport, a universal language. You're going to see Nuggets jerseys in foreign countries like you've never seen them before. I know, I got family in Italy. They're Nuggets fans. Serbia, done. Argentina with Baku yeah. last year, done. There's all angles, all corners of yeah. the earth that when you win a championship, you have a seat at the adult yeah, table. The brand is going yes. straight up. I hope they finally get the respect on the name that they deserve. This has been an incredible championship to watch. Let's go out to uh, Bill Hastings. He is speaking with, uh, or Scott Hastings, so I apologize. He's speaking with Coach Malone. He said, you ain't felt it yet. You talked to Bednar. He said, wait for the break. You feel it yet? I tell you what, it's starting to hit me. <laughs> Starting to hit me being, being with my closest friends in Denver, lining these streets for the parade route. This is love, man. This is support. This is 47 years in the making. And to celebrate with my family, my daughters, my friends, my players, and the, the whole organization is just unbelievable. I'm so proud of this moment. You and I were in a parade in 1990. <laughs> this is bigger, don't you think? It is. You know what? Because this has been a long time coming. A lot of people came before me. I got to give a huge shout out to guys like Coach Doug Moe, guys like Alex English, guys like Fat Lever. Uh, the list goes on and on. I'm forgetting so many of them, but this is a special moment. But here's the thing, Scott. My goal is to come back and do it again next year. Why not? Why not? Why wouldn't we? I love you too, brother. Let's go! Some more kissing. Well, well, kissing that was also an over-under on the radio show this morning. First Nuggets person to kiss another, and that's Scott Hastings. He wins that one. Hey, Hastings, Who won that bet? <laughs> Hastings is the most emotional person on our team. He Would might be. Agree? He might be. And yeah. you notice that Malone did not kiss Hastings right off the bat. <laughs> There's a lot going out of, on out there. Let's go to Katie Wingy. She's out on the fire truck, and let's see uh, what, how, how the players are reacting. We are now at the back of the fire truck. The champagne has been brought back here. KCP AG hanging out back here. He's about to pop some bottles. They're lighting the cigars. The fans are loving it. Gotta get the perfect photo opportunity first. Gotta make sure it's captured. Some technical difficulties unwrapping the champagne. You can feel the love. They can feel the love. I don't, oh, oh, what's happening? Hey! KCP's at it now. KCP's at it. Had to be that way. Hey! Champagne showers. Champagne showers. They're reminding the crowd that they are number one in the world. Nuggets fans can't get enough. Can't get enough. I'll send it back. Champagne showers and championship dreams out there. What an incredible moment. The champagne is popping. I had a number that in the uh, locker room, I'm not sure if this is public information, but it is now. <laughs> there was $50,000 of champagne in that locker room that was consumed on wow. the carpets, wow. on the floors, on the ceilings. It was covered.
everyone yes. and yes. everything. Yes. I saw videos. Yes. It was incredible. Did they run out or was there more? <laughs> we were looking. <laughs> we were going to go through your fridge at one point. <laughs> Nick Rothschild is running around. Look at Malone Near dancing. Fire truck. Malone is dancing. Let's check in with Nick. Oh, God. <laughs> Little technical difficulties there. We'll check back in with Nick in a moment. Coach Michael Malone <laughs> tossing beers out to the crowd. Oh, I knew he was going to let loose today. <laughs> I knew he was going to let loose. You know, the one thing about this team is how they were able, Chris, to stay locked in during this playoff run because it's easy. Guys like us, oh my gosh, you're gonna win a championship. Yeah. They never talked about what they could do, what they need to do. Yeah, the focus was there the whole time. Yeah. When they were in a must-win situation, they got it. When they were in a win-win situation, they got it. It was just incredible work from the Denver Nuggets. They never let, one game they let down. One game they let down. Other than that, they were perfect. Think about this number. 16 and 4 in the postseason. They were 10 and 1 in their remaining games. They yep. finished 10 and 1. 10 out of 11. Yep. It's an incredible record. Well, that parade is going to meet here at Civic Center Park. One thing we haven't shown you is the fans on the ground here. Let's go out to Micah Smith. Hey, Jessica, we had to pop up on the riser here for a second because I wanted to show you this incredible view. Check out the back of Civic Center Park. The crowd in the back is ready to go. They're nowhere near the stage. They can barely see anything, and yet they are still hype. I talked to young fans, old fans, fans who just jumped on the Nuggets bandwagon. For those of you listening, there's still room. And those who have been praying for this day for years and years and years, and the theme is the same. They are just elated ecstatic to be in this crowd today. I always say this is what true fandom looks like when you can't even get close to the team, can't even hope for it. All you can hope for is a glimpse of that screen at the very front of Civic Center Park. But we're even seeing some fans standing on the steps of the state capitol. And if you don't know how far away that is from the city and county building, let me let you know it is a long ways away. So we're going to pop back down there in just a minute. But I wanted to make sure that I showed you the view from the back because I don't know about you, that's pretty incredible to me. That's a lot of love to not even be able to see the stage, but just be happy to be in the house. Back to you at the front of Civic Center Park. Thank you, Micah. We're looking at Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray with the trophy and the MVP trophy as well. They are celebrating out there. And Micah's right, you know, you had to get out here early. We're talking 5, 6 o'clock in the morning to get a spot oh, yeah. up here in front at Civic Center Park because there is just hundreds of thousands of people out there. <laughs> Hanslick's messing with the Joker brothers. Hanslick and the Jokic brothers. <laughs> He's I, trying to get him off that fire truck. <laughs> good luck with that. I wish Doug Moe was here right now yeah. to say, Hanslick, get out of there. Get out of there. Just get out of there. Sit down. <laughs> also on that truck, Jessica, was Stan Kroenke, who's seated between Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic. And let's say something. For Stan Kroenke and his ownership group, Three years ago, an NFL Super Bowl championship. Yes. Then an NHL Stanley Cup championship. A mammoth lacrosse championship in that same year, and this year an NBA championship. That streak, that run, by one ownership group, Four years, four of them in three years, that'll never happen again. Uh, it's incredible. Well, I hear that Coach Malone has the mic on his truck. Let's listen in. This is uh, Mike Malone, coming from downtown Denver on parade day and I'm surrounded by 500,000 of my best friends and my beautiful wife and I just want to say to Nuggets Nation eight years for me for 47 years for you I appreciate your patience this is a beautiful day and we love each and every one of you guys so what a great day to celebrate a championship but we're not done yet we're some greedy bastards baby we're some greedy bastards we're getting another one and I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> it, it's a little bit of Pat Riley there. Oh, it, was. it was a little bit of Pat Riley when they asked Riley, can you repeat? Can you go for more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we can repeat yeah. it. Like we can said, go for I'll come repeat. back here next year. I'm excited. <laughs> well, you know, he's never been afraid of those expectations. He said it from the get-go this year. Why wouldn't we be? You know, we're healthy now. He thought that they were going to be uh, NBA champions two years ago before Jamal got hurt. All right, I yeah. just heard that the mic got passed to Contavious Caldwell Pope. <laughs> Let's hear what he has to say. He's on one of those trucks celebrating. Hey, 
KCP reporting live here from the Denver Nuggets Championship Parade. It's going crazy. As you can see, I can barely hear myself talk right now. Two ways, two, look, look at the crowd, it's just crazy. Come on, get up, let's go, come on. You hear the crowd, right? Yes. This is like perfect. I love it. To take a call, we're Port Live from the Denver Nuggets. I'm with AG here, Aaron Gordon, Aaron Gordon, is what they call him. What do you think about the parade? This is unreal, bro. Unreal. I see you. I like the reporting skills too, KGB. I like that. I'm real smooth, man. Right. Unreal. I got one more la one last question. How does it feel to be a champion? You would know champ, champ. You would know twice. You would know two times, champ. Feel unreal, baby. I mean, I'm experiencing. I'm experiencing this with you. As far as parade, this is my first one, so this is overwhelming for me. Uh, Look, this is my brother. I wouldn't want to be on the floor with nobody else. This is my brother. I appreciate right here. you, AG. This is my brother, we love you, Nuggets. We love you. Apparently, it's okay. To wear your shirt unbuttoned as a uh, Nuggets reporter. Only which, if you have enough change. That's cool. It's, 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 it's that's good. awesome. I think Altitude should adopt that dress code for next season. <laughs> Hanslick would be great in what that What about role. Hastings? Sure. Oh, oh my, my God. Oh, my well, God. Well, you know, he said something important, Jessica, because as you mentioned, when KCP won his first NBA championship, there was no parade. And no. it was during COVID. He gets to enjoy this now. We're doing it right today. All We're right, celebrating. Guys. This is We've got the last one. Joker. Looking again at uh, Nikola Jokic, Jamal Murray, and, and their families on that fire truck. A beautiful celebration. His little girl wearing the chair cap. <laughs> she looks thirsty. Open this bottle, Dad. No, not the beer. Not the beer. And look Water. at that smile on Jokic. He looks happy to be here. <laughs> There's Josh yep. Kroenke, Stan Kroenke, and Veronica there's our reporter. Veronica Acosta's right there. Veronica, or how are fans feeling seeing the MVP right there? And they're losing their minds, Jessica. Do you hear that? <laughs> they're so excited. You got Nikola Jokic up there, the MVP with his baby. You got both the trophies, the MVP trophy, Jamal Murray, and look at that. He's going to sign something for a fan, uh, a painting there. Such an exciting time. Listen to this. This is what fans have been waiting for for hours. I mean, they're excited about the entire team, but to see Nikola Jokic, the MVP, come through here, to see Jamal Murray, to see the Jokic brothers even, you see them back there with their champagne, the swag chains hanging off the fire truck. This is what they've all been waiting for. Take a listen. Such an exciting time for some of these lifelong fans who have waited for this moment for years, decades. Listen to that. Thank you, Veronica. Looks like they've gone through a couple of bottles of champagne there, so they're having a great, great time. Oh, they deserve it. Thank you, Veronica. It's beautiful to see the dynamic duo up there on the fire truck celebrating. And can we talk about Jamal Murray? What an incredible comeback that he's had from injury, thinking he was going to be cut, coming back better than ever to win a championship. It's not just that, Jessica. It's the ability to up your game in the most important games. And no player in NBA history has upped the ante like Jamal Murray has. Eight points better in the postseason than he is in the regular season. Yeah, I contend after 2020, after the bubble, that he would have been a three-time All-Star now. Yes. The Nuggets would have had another NBA championship. I think he's one of the most underappreciated players in the league. He's just been sensational. And listen, he had a devastating knee injury. Anytime you're out for two years for, 
for crying out loud, you're going to have self-doubt. And he had to deal with that. Look at AG. AG screaming at people. Oh, he that, is that shirt will come off. It'll come off by the time he hits the stage, I guarantee it. He doesn't keep, I was told this, Vic, this is maybe a scoop. Yeah. The t-shirts that he wears, he does not keep them now. He, he wears them once and then throws them away. Get rid of them. J.R. Smith used to do the same thing. <laughs> yes. That one will be in the trash can, and uh, it may be on sale tomorrow morning don't at you do that with your, You do that with your suit. It's going to be on you? eBay. Oh, uh, no, just my ties. Okay. All right, let's go out to uh, Scott Hastings. He's with Nuggets assistant Ryan Bullock. Dude, you played here. You coached around the place. Um, did you ever think, first of all, this is a Nuggets parade? Never thought this would happen. Uh, in all honesty, uh, this is pretty wild. This is a pretty special moment. Michael talked about it was good to take the parade for him to realize you guys are NBA champs. Has it hit you yet? This is a big step. I think there's three phases. The on-stage presentation, the locker room celebration here, and then we get the rings. But, man, this is pretty special. This is emotional. Real fast. Biggest key, go back in the season sometime, a moment when you went, damn, we can win this thing. You know, I really thought Jamal shot against Portland. When we won that game, I'm like, Jamal Murray is back, and we have a, a legitimate chance. And we, we kind of took off from that point. But that game, to me, really stuck out like, man, we got a chance to do something special. I love you, man. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Hugs all around. <laughs> what an incredible moment. Ryan Bowen played one, during one of those eras in Nuggets basketball yeah. where you didn't have title aspirations at that point, right? That, that, those did not exist. And he's now coaching a team that can do this multiple times. Yeah, I thought that was great. He was talking about that shot that the Murray game winner against Portland. But Vic, think back to how many great shots there were throughout innumerable the season. AG from the corner, AG dunking on the Christmas game. Blanco, Nicole, half court. Nikola Jokic from the top the key. I mean, just wild and woolly moments for this Denver Nuggets team. And it's going to continue, folks, for the next 5, 10, 15 years, however long that Nikola Jokic and the Jokic brothers are in Denver, Colorado. And that's one of the reasons it upsets me when I hear the national tone that it's not an interesting or compelling product. I, I know we're on NBA TV right now. Yeah. Go back and look at the Nuggets highlight clips, and you tell me if they're interesting or compelling. It's yep. so entertaining to watch, and I think the thing that's so fascinating about watching Nikola Jokic play is he throws the ball up and you can't even believe how it made it in the basket. I mean, it's just incredible to watch. And he's a team player, the assists. I mean, he's just all around. He's got he's got it all. I mean, I don't know what uh, some of the experts out there have been watching, but uh, Denver Nuggets fans know their team. I'll tell you, that's the greatest description of the You're right. Yoga. He does things. <laughs> He does things that you don't expect, that you've never seen another player in NBA history do. He's just unusual. He's unique. Uh, he has a quirky personality, really fun. But right now, he's the best player in basketball, and I think these playoffs proved it. They're playing the Avalanche song now. <laughs> the Avalanche theme song when they won the championship last year. But I, I oh, here's another truck. City of Thornton, represent, baby. <laughs> Is that North Denver? That's North Denver, North oh. of Denver. That's right, they're unloading it looks like already. They're unloading. They're getting close here as well. Oh my gosh, they're taking the party to the streets. We have much more coming up. We're going to take a quick break and be right back with more from the players, more from the fans, and we are getting ready for all the speeches and all the fun. here with the fans the sun is out those fire trucks are slowly but surely arriving here to Civic Center Park and uh, some of the players the team are starting to unload the party is loud the energy is fantastic I'm here with Vic Lombardi and Chris Marlowe celebrating guys a historic day beautiful energy out here could you ever imagine this celebration would be this incredible 14-year-old Vic couldn't imagine it. 15-year-old uh, Vic, heck, 53-year-old Vic had trouble imagining it. I think celebrations are magical. This is certainly for a, for a team, uh, for a city, uh, for the world. It's just great to be a Denver Nugget today. Beautiful day to be in Denver. Let's go to Katie Wingy. She's on one of those fire trucks, Katie. In case you're wondering which truck 
is the fun truck. It's this one. It's this one. how many beers they have shotguns. KCP is now shirtless. They are autographing everything that gets thrown up here. The vibes are immaculate. They are, they really are. I celebrated. I never did that. That definitely took some skill. They are going to uh, need a little break to unload and before they hit the speeches here at Civic Center Park. Maybe a little meal, some fries. <laughs> well, and that's why by the time they get here, look at look at Michael Malone. He is a oh. man of the peace. <laughs> he is talking to anybody and everybody. It's so cool to see him with his hair down. Absolutely. He doesn't grow his hair out too often, but he's got his hair down today. So once the season is over, great, but this season is unlike <laughs> any other season for the Denver Nuggets. It's good to see him relax and have some fun and uh, let it all hang out. High fives all around. I can't imagine how surreal that feels for the fans out there, getting the high five from the coach and seeing the players tossing beers out into the crowd. Yeah. Well, you know, that's part of the deal. That's part of the appeal of being a championship city. We are title town. Back-to-back -back parades here in title town. Who knows how many more in store? Don't forget the cores of both the Avs and, and the Nuggets. They're, they're intact. Yeah, the cores are good for both teams. For the Denver Nuggets, they've got guys in the pipeline, too. Oh, yeah. They're coming up, Peyton Watson, and they've got a kid in France named Ishmael Kamagate. 6'11", mm -hmm. 250 pounds, rebounding, shot-blocking maniac. He'll be over. Uh, you're going to have Colin Gillespie, who was injured all year. you got some young guys. Christian Brown is going to ascend. And as you said, the core for the Denver Nuggets right in its prime. Absolutely. A beautiful day out here at Civic Center Park. Fans are celebrating. We're waiting for the team to make it here on that parade. 53 fire trucks fired up this, <laughs> this morning. It is pretty incredible. And we've been, you know, talking about the team, what makes up the core of this team, and all of the hard work that they have put into it. It has really been beautiful to see. I, I can't believe that we, you know, finally have gotten here after watching all of these games and the tension and getting to release all that and celebrate today. I think everybody deserves it. I'm glad you said that, Jessica, because is it me or does it feel like the postseason is just as long as the regular season? Uh, longer. It feels longer. Longer, but more pressure, more tougher. strenuous. Yes, uh, unbelievably rigorous. And the postseason starts and you're thinking, okay, just one game at a time. But it's, it's really more than that. It's one quarter at a time. It turns into one possession at a time. It, everything goes into minutia mode when you get to the postseason. And that fourth quarter of game five, Monday night at Ball Arena was a wrestling match. Well, you know, there, 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 are no, there are days off, yes. But players don't take games off. You play 40 minutes a game. And, and you play your guys. guys. Absolutely. So you're, you're grinding as yeah. hard as you grinded, and you've got a quarter of the season wrapped up into this little bubble, and the Nuggets were able to really take advantage of that. Well, Vladko Chanchar has grabbed the mic. Let's uh -oh. listen in. Vladko! Yeah. Uh, I've been told not to give interviews because I might say something stupid. So all I'm going to say is I have fun. 
Thank you guys. <laughs> Cha Cha from afar. Yes. Beautiful moment. I mean, all of these guys are so excited, but I'm kind of curious. What are they going to do in the off season when they go home? Well. Is it different after you're an NBA champion? We know what Nikola Jokic we is going to do. He's going to board a flight possibly minutes after this parade, and he's flying back to Sambor. He's going to be hanging out with his horses as soon as he gets back because, you know, that's the important thing about Nikola Jokic. Time away is just as important as time with. Yeah, yeah he had a, a really good comment uh, about basketball. He said, basketball is not my main thing in life. It's what I do really, really well, but it's not my main thing, and that's family and country and uh, at faith. That is Should so be that beautiful. way. And he, he even wears his wedding ring on, ties it up on his shoes. I, I think that's so beautiful and down to earth. I mean, he never forgets about his family. He's uh, always just a, a you know a, a, a down to earth, humble guy. You know, in fact, he was my neighbor when I first moved here to Denver. He was. Wow. And let me tell you, getting into an elevator. What do they with, pay at Channel you know, Seven? I, it's Channel yeah. Seven. I, I, I want that Channel Seven. That's that's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Getting into an elevator with Nikola Jokic and his two brothers is the most intimidating thing in the whole world, but they are the nicest guys they on are. earth. They're sweet as can be. They've adopted Denver, and he's the perfect franchise star for a city like Denver, yes. isn't he? I agree. He's a lot like Tim Duncan was yeah. in San Antonio. He's just a perfect guy, doesn't worry about all the hoopla. He doesn't care about the stat sheets. He just goes out and plays winning basketball. And the best thing about the Cody Oak is he makes everybody on the team better. So everybody that wants to come to Denver and maybe play, you'll get better if you come here and play with the Cola. There's not a lot of players like that that make other players better. That is yeah. a very yeah. big attribute to have and, and, and pretty incredible. Especially at that position. Absolutely. At that position, it's hard to do. So, again, selfless, no ego. No. He is what he is. The world knows it now. We've known it for years. He handles all of this incredibly well. I mean, the pressure that has been on him this entire season. So many people were wondering why he you know, didn't show so much emotion. But I, I think he just, you know, had to do what he had to do as a leader. That cuts both ways, Jessica. The fact he didn't show emotion. Think about this. During that game five, the one guy who did not look nervous out there was who? Nikola Jokic. Jokic. No. He was 12 of 16. <laughs> yeah, nobody could shots, shoot. Nobody, nobody could make could a shoot. shot. <laughs> Usually when you're missing shots long or short, that's nerves. That's energy. That's yeah. anxiety. Yeah. Not him. He made his shots. Yeah. He always does. Yeah, he kept calm and collected. I don't think I was calm and collected not me. at that point. Hey, you mentioned something earlier. Uh, that the Nuggets will play in the Christmas game this year. Who would be the ideal opponent for the Denver Nuggets in the Ooh. Christmas game? That is a great question. Um, does it have to be an Eastern No, it phone? can be anybody you want. Lakers. I you would take love Laker. to see that, too. Yeah. <laughs> Lakers, you know why? The dragon has been slayed <laughs> three times. The LA Lakers have denied the Nuggets entrance into the NBA Finals three times. This time, they swept They them. got swept. Lakers over Joel Embiid and the Philadelphia 76ers. That's another good candidate. The matchup yeah. that never came on. That's a great candidate. That You're would be exactly a good one. Right. It doesn't matter. You know what? The, the Christmas game is going to bring it. I'm wondering where they're going to play it if it's going it's to be an afternoon be, game. And it's got to be in Denver. Of course. It shouldn't be on the road. Of course. <laughs> well, the wind is picking oh. up and the fans are excited. Let's go out to Danny New. <laughs> Most amazing thing just happened. So Christian Brown, rookie sensation, comes through. He looks like Russell Crowe in The Gladiator. He is shirtless. He's like this. And he's like basically saying, are you not entertained? But he didn't really say that. But he did have some exchanges, some transactions with a man just met named Isaiah. Isaiah, you had the greatest moment of your life. Tell me, there was eye contact involved. Oh, yeah, no, dude. As soon as he tossed me that brewski, I already had to knew what I had to do, man. I opened up that straight bear claw on him, and I was just like, jaw, baby, you know what I mean? drank it. And as soon as I seen it, I was like, I know what I got to do. Looked at my boy, said, this is for us. Bang, bang. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, you, so you made eye contact with him and they threw you a beer? Yeah, no, literally, yeah. Like, cause like I was hyping up the crowd and he gauged it and then he just like looked right at me and I was like, dude, I'm the one, bro. Come on, send it my way. And as soon as he did, he launched it. I fucking caught it. And that's just, it's just a history story after that. You know what I mean? There's plenty of history being made right now. And I guess I'm part two of it. I don't know. <laughs> and how did that beer from Christian Brown taste? And say oh. it without cursing this time. Oh, um, probably one of the best beers I've ever had in my life. I understand what they mean now when Coors is brewed in the Rockies, because <laughs> right. that went down super smooth, you know. <laughs> and 
All I gotta say is shout out to him, man. I really appreciate it. And let's just say, one of the best days of my life. Let's go, Nuggets. We're gonna get it next year. Sounds good. Thank awesome. you, brother. Appreciate you. you. He had the best beer of his life from Christian Brown. It was like this. Yeah. <laughs> Back to you guys. Thank that, you, Danny. That, guy, that guy's ready. Yeah, he was speaking Christian Brown's language. That was something he, else. Uh, that's an interesting way to say launched it into the crowd. Yes. <laughs> well, the rally is coming up next. Sparky, this is. Take a look at that. The fire trucks are arriving here at Civic Center Park where the party does not stop. We'll be right back with more. Yeah, as I said a little bit earlier, he's engendered the support of the two best players on the team. You've got Nikola Jokic, you've got Jamal Murray. Uh, when you have those two guys in your corner, you're going to be successful. And he was able to wield and, and, and put together, kind of like a jigsaw puzzle, put together the, the pieces for the Denver Nuggets. And here they are with the championship eight years after he started. I mean, it's just an incredible eye to have and to the foresight to have eight years in the making. But, you know, for fans, this is, you know, four decades in the making. They've been waiting for this moment. And it's a beautiful moment to have. I hope we have another one. Coach Michael Malone says, we want more. Yeah. We all want more. Let's go out to Micah Smith. Uh, she has an, uh, an interview. She's been speaking with fans out there. Micah? All right, Jess. So I'm here with Janae and Leah. We're just doing all day. They are so excited. Now we are with the best crowd in the back of Civic Center Park. Tell me what brought you two out here today. The championship, baby! We're winners! Oh my God. Obvious answer. Yeah. <laughs> now I saw you hanging out back here, and that's no shade. I think the most loyal fans are in the back of Civic Center Park because you're not close to the stage. How does it feel to just be here? Man, it's it's so hype. Our city is so live today. We just want to support our team and rep for Denver. <laughs> yeah, we've been waiting for this all season. So <laughs> for years, 47 years. Yeah, yeah. All season. 47 years. All right, I have to ask everybody I interview, your favorite players, go ahead and tell me. Murray. 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 Yeah. yeah. Murray. Murray. It's a toss up. Jokic, Murray. Murray, but they all did a good job. They did a great, everybody did a great job. I'm not mad yeah. at nobody for anything they did. We're winners, we're champs, we're happy. All right, your message for Nuggets Nation. What do you say to all of Nuggets Nation out there? Let's go! Oh my goodness. We're As <laughs> All right, as I told you, the best crowd is in the back of Civic Center Park. We're having a great time. We're going to keep perusing, keep mingling with the back of the park. You already hear that Nuggets chant going. I'll send it back to you at the front of the park. The best <laughs> fans in the world. Thank you, Micah. What I love when I hear from the fans, they always mention different favorite players. They mention Jamal Murray. We hear Nikola Jokic. We hear about Aaron Gordon. I mean, this is an incredible championship team that was put together, and Calvin Poole in the front office was a big part of that, right, Chris? Calvin Booth has done one of the great jobs in management history. Tom, uh, Calvin Booth, Tommy Balsettis, they went out, they knew what they needed to put the pieces together for this team. They went out and drafted Christian Brown. They didn't know if he was going to play right away, but they knew he'd be a big deal. They went and traded for Contavious Caldwell Pope, and Ish Smith brought them in. They were key. And they got Bruce Brown as a free agent. They convinced him to come to Denver. I give ultimate respect. We've talked about Malone. We've talked about the Cronkies. we talked about all of it. But Calvin Booth, Tommy Bell said us that group, they have set us on a path to winning that should continue for quite some time. And we are going to love to watch it for years to yeah. come. Well, Chris Dempsey is speaking with a Nuggets director of performance. Let's listen in. All right, Felipe, what a day for you. What were your emotions and how's it gone so far? What a day for us. You know, we worked so hard 
to be here. You know, we worked so hard to achieve this. And then uh, it's just doing it, doing it again, and doing it again, and doing it again, and doing it again. So it's just like the consistency of all the players. You know what I mean? Like everybody say, like, we got better players. No, we got some warriors. Um, and we're here. So let's repeat next year. You know, uh, I've been asked this a lot. When did I know that you guys could do it this year? But I'm going to ask that to you. When did you know? What, what moment was it for you that you knew this team was ready to do this? About halfway through the season when we wanted to rest some guys and they say, now I'm not resting. That was the time that I was just like, wow, this is different. You know what I mean? Did I know that we were in a championship? I knew from year one. But, you know, it's just like now the guys say, like, I don't want to rest. That meant a lot to us. And I was like, wow, we had some tough dudes. We had some warriors. And here we are. Does it feel as good as you thought it might? Better. 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 Yeah. We appreciate you, man. Yeah. Thank you. Congratulations. I can't imagine what it's like to see all of your hard work come to fruition. I, I mean, and, and so many people, you know, they were naysayers, right? They were hating. They didn't believe that the Nuggets could get here. It's pretty incredible. Let's just talk about Felipe Eichenberger for a second, uh, the strength and conditioning coach for the Nuggets, but the personal coach for Nikola Jokic. He's the one that told Nikola Jokic that you have to eat better. He's the one that told Nikola Jokic you have to train harder. Nikola Jokic lifting weights. There's Christian Brown. He's in on the strength and conditioning program. His body looks like a young Marlowe, <laughs> a very young Marlowe 40 years ago. What a stud he is. But getting back to Nikola Jokic, he convinced Nikola Jokic that he could be as great as he wanted to be if he took it seriously, changed his diet, got off Coca-Cola, started training, lifting weights. Nikola always had it here. He always had the skills to play basketball, but now we're seeing it in fruition. Oh, he really got in shape, especially over the last year or so. And you know, this we just saw Christian Brown without his shirt off yeah. out there. Summer showed up about half an hour ago. I hope he has a sunblock I'll on. I'll tell you what, he, he needs to get a tan. He needs to get a little bit of a tan <laughs> going forward. He's definitely getting it today. All right, let's go out to Chris Dempsey. He is speaking with Calvin Booth, the GM of the Nuggets. There we go. Look who I found. It's the GM, Calvin Booth. Um, first of all, tell me about the ride on the fire truck. How was that? Exhilarating. Yeah. One word. <laughs> um, you have to be so proud. I mean, this is your first year. You did it in your first year. Uh, what are the emotions kind of going through your head about this basketball team and what it did? I mean, it's just like I planned it, so I'm not surprised. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I mean, it's uh, I'm real. You know, like people try their whole lives. I played 10 years in the NBA, never got close to this and so uh, you know I'm just trying to take it all in and like say to myself is it real was there a moment this season at which you knew when you looked at your team out there you knew that okay this team can do this September Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I, I felt like we had the talent um, Bruce shot it way better in open gym than I expect him to shoot it like I'm not you know uh, I didn't realize he could shoot like that you know we try to do all the work we can we know he was a competitor, a slasher, but like the shooter he was, we weren't planning on that. So like seeing things like that, seeing how competitive we were, how connected we were, like I thought, I expected this like when we started, if we stayed healthy. And we got lucky and we stayed a little healthy. Well, and Bruce is part of a lot of moves that you made at the beginning of the season, oh, excuse me, last off season. You bring in Bruce, you bring in KCP, you draft Christian Brown. Those guys play significant roles um, on this team. Just talk about the additions and what, what why did they help so much get this team from one level to this level? Well, I think it starts with the, uh, the guys we already have. Uh, Jamal, Nicola, Mike, Aaron, they're all easy to build around. So it was a, it was a pretty easy puzzle to figure out. And uh, luckily, we got lucky and was, were able to transact and acquire KCP, who I thought would be a good fit. And, uh, and you know, Bruce Brown, who could have got paid a lot more in free agency. But um, I think it starts with our core. Our core it's not that hard to build around those guys. Uh, Michael Malone said, hey, let's make a dynasty out of this. Uh, how many more championships is in this team? I mean, we got to get to the finals again first. You know, like, let's, let's, I like to put the cart before all of the horses. That's what I do. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> Calvin, appreciate it. Congratulations, man. One step at a time there. <laughs> yeah, Calvin Booth, he, he's so down to earth and so so based in reality. He's done a terrific job. I remember Tim Conley got the Denver Nuggets 
a part of the way there. They drafted Nikola Jokic, Jamal Murray, but Calvin Booth, the final step, he's been unbelievable. We're told that they were blocking the fire truck for Nikola Jokic, and now he's making his way through, and here they come. Slowly but surely making his way here to Civic Center Park. You saw the crowd mobbing at that fire truck. They are so excited. Forget the barricades, apparently, now today. run the gauntlet, run the gauntlet. <laughs> But they are still making it through. I can see Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic at the head of that fire truck, still celebrating, cheering on the fans. Their families are on that truck as well. It's like a Clint Eastwood movie. <laughs> they're trying to get through the peeps and get to the final destination, and they're almost here. Well, we have Chris Dempsey speaking with the Nuggets assistant coach. Chris? All right. And the hits just keep on coming. Popeye Jones is here. Yeah, cigar time, no doubt. Okay, um, just talk me through your emotions right now. Um, well, when we first won it, you know, my emotions was um, tears of joy. Now it's more a happiness, you know. I'm really, really just happy that, you know, after almost 30 years playing and coaching that uh, I've done something that not a lot of people, you know, get a chance to do, and that's win a world uh, title and be called a world champion, and that's, uh, that's really special to me. What was, tell me about this basketball team and what made it so special? Uh, I think the togetherness. I think that uh, it was just a great mix of veterans from, from Jeff to DJ to Ish to guys uh, to Casey Pugh who's won a champion or a championship. And then, uh, you know, obviously Joke and Jamal who was trying to get there who they, they could help guide to that. And, you know, you got a young Michael Porter who, who who is very talented, you know, struggled in some games, but really, really showed up big in game five. And then, you know, they, they were eager to learn. They, they all year long, Coach Malone did a good job. Uh, we stayed consistent with our message, and our message was always defense, and everybody talked about how bad our defense was, and then we couldn't win a championship, and then you saw what happened in the playoffs. Yeah, you uh, quite honestly played the best defense of maybe the season in that series against the Miami Heat. Um, uh, when you look at the future of this basketball team, what do you see? Uh, it's bright, you know, there, there's still a lot of youth. Uh, uh, obviously, Bruce is a big part of it. We'll see what happens with him. Hopefully, he comes back, but uh, a lot of youth. Um, guys that are young, they're still in their prime. Uh, you got guys, obviously, like Christian Brown, who got a taste of it. Uh, Peyton Watson, who's young, who I think is going to be terrific for us next year. So we're looking, you know, let's do it again. Why not? Yeah. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Yep. Nuggets assistant coach Popeye Jones. This has got to be, you know, at the top of one of those moments in his career to see this team become NBA champions. Chris. Absolutely. Terrific job by the Nuggets coaching staff and all the assistants and the trainers and all of it. Well, the team has arrived. The rally is next. We'll be right back with more.
Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray being led to Civic Center Park by hundreds of thousands of their fans who look like they've broken through the barricades out there. They are celebrating. We're getting ready for this rally to start. It can't start without them. <laughs> We're hoping they make it here soon. Let's go get Bruce Brown. He's made its way into Civic Center Park and the building. He's checking out the crowd. He is ready. He's been an integral part of this team this season. Chris, everybody keeps mentioning they hope he sticks around. He said that money isn't the biggest thing in the world. He loves this team, and uh, we hope that he stays for years to come. Yeah, that theory is going to be tested because he's <laughs> making six and a half million. He's got an option for that. And uh, the Nuggets obviously want to re-sign Bruce Brown. He's a key figure in this team. Played backup point, uh, two guard, shooting guard, power forward. Uh, as Calvin Booth said, he's a much better shooter than people thought. And you know what he's got? This is a, a term from other days. He's gnarly. He's gnarly, folks. He, he, he gets into you. He guards you. He, he tries to block your shot. He's got a seven-foot reach. He steals the ball. He dives on the floor. He's just the kind of player you want to have on your team. And hopefully the Nuggets can keep him. Because you can put him anywhere. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. He was a key in game five. He comes up with the biggest play of the game, that put bad basket uh, off the Marine shot. Uh, he sneaks right in there. Aaron Gordon's engaging three guys, and he lays it in, and that proved to be the winning score. Well, another important player on the team, veteran player on the team, Jeff Green, Chris Dempsey, speaking with him now. I'm sorry, I'm drunk. Altitude now. <laughs> Altitude We're now. We're here, ending the parade. We're about to go up there, have some fun with the fans. Uh, you had a question to ask me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Long this is your first time, man. How's it feel? Man, it's amazing. This is everything I dreamed of. Uh, I've been waiting for this moment for a long time. And I'm enjoying myself. My family, my family, I don't know where they at, but they're here somewhere. And uh, I'm lucky that I got the chance to enjoy it with them. My kids, my beautiful wife, my dad, my mother-in-law, my sister, my brother-in-law. We all are here celebrating. My man Connor, you know, best PD film, you know what I'm saying? He got us right. So, you know, we got a chance. Nope, too big. Can't do that. Too heavy. You call me weak? Yeah. We got a chance to enjoy this all together, man. This is about, we are really family, man. Yeah. Really family. So, you know. You see that sea of Nuggets fans. And it's beautiful. Yeah. This is what we're doing for. They gave us the energy all year. Uh, so that's why I got out the, the, the truck, man, uh, to give them the energy back. Um, they supported us all year long. And for us to, you know, be here up close and personal with them to give the energy back, that's what it's all about. So I enjoyed myself. All right, man. Go enjoy it. Appreciate oh, you. yes. Uh, Thank I am. you. I am. <laughs> Uncle Jeff, he's been in the league 14 years, played with 10 different teams before the Nuggets. This is going to be an incredible championship win for him yeah his, first. his journey and ish smith too they've all played for multiple teams and uh to go from team to team to team and you're trying to find the right spot and the right fit and jeff green coming off the bench for the denver nuggets and remember the nuggets only playing eight guys but jeff green coming in he didn't have big numbers you look at his numbers you go well what did he do provided stability played defense made key shots. I'm thinking about that one big three. I think it was in game four. Uh, a great guy to have on the team, him and DeAndre Jordan, best friends. And when you talk about the chemistry of this team, Jeff Green is right in the middle of that. Yeah, you call him Uncle Jeff. I love that. And I've, I've seen Jeff Green all over the community here in Denver as well, whether that's at the Boys and Girls yeah. Club, hanging out with the kids, inspiring them. I've seen him, uh, you know, talking to patients at UC yeah. Health, and I just love when I see a player that becomes an integral part of the community as well. All well, around good guy. He's a special guy, and it makes me wonder when, when people look at Denver and they look at the makeup of the team, they know they got the stars and Jokic and Murray. How attractive is this place? You can come to Denver, you can play with a group that is chemistry given by an all star type coach uh, with a superstar player with Eurelian sunshine and fans that are the best in the world. It's all good here in Denver today. Oh, it is all good. It is beautiful here in Denver right now. Chris Dempsey's been busy. He's now uh, speaking with Contagious Caldwell Pope. <laughs> hey guys. KCP, this was a, um, it looked like an amazing fire truck ride for you. Uh, it was, because uh, I didn't get the experience when I, uh, I won in 2020 uh, due to COVID. But this is like, is like so amazing, man. Like just to get to experience it. And then like just watching it from 2020 to like everybody else getting the parade and shit, like, like stuff like that, man. It's, 
I'm overwhelmed. Like, I'm, I'm so excited. I, I, I love the fans here, man. Y'all is y'all are great, man. We love y'all. I, I wonder, you know, I wonder, is it everything you thought it might be? Because you, you talked about not getting that parade, but now you see the sea of Nuggets fans. Like, is it everything you thought it might be? It was, it was way over what I expected, you know. So, like, I expected, like, it to be, you know what I'm saying, the whole city, man, and it, it probably was more than that, you yeah. know, and like, we, we love this city, like, we love the, the, the fans, like, the support that we have, like, we did it for them, like, like I said, man, it's been 47 years since their first championship, and I'm just so happy to be a part of that, yeah. you know. <laughs> I, I know Michael Malone said it might not hit him until the, you guys stand out there, has it, has it hit you that you're champion again, and I, I, I agree with him. Yeah. Uh, it, it really hasn't hit me yet. Uh, the parade ride, like, kind of started it off, but once we get in here, I, I feel like it's gonna, it's gonna hit me, and it's gonna be like a little bit emotional, but it's gonna be great. All right, go enjoy, it, my guy. Thank you. Thank you. KCP, and he said it felt like the whole city is out here. It does feel like the whole city of Denver's out here right now. You know, sometime back in the day, someone invented the phrase sea of humanity somewhere <laughs> sometimes sea of humanity that's what we have here today everywhere you look the fans of the denver nuggets are here celebrating their first championship in their nba history 47 years and it's a a, a, a day i will certainly remember and all these fans will remember it too oh absolutely this is the day to take a pto day and come out and celebrate <laughs> no work getting done in the city of Denver today. And there is nothing wrong with that because it is time to celebrate. And I mean, just look at that crowd from the city of Denver building all the way to the state capitol. It is packed here at Civic Center Park. You know what? Championships are better when they're kind of unexpected. When you go on a long run like the Warriors or the Spurs, you're expecting a, a championship every season. But you don't always get it. But when you wait and you wait and you put, put it together and you hire a new coach and you draft some new guys and you get it all together, this feels special. And uh, you look at uh, the Christian Brown and, of course, in the future for him, maybe another championship or two. He's going to be a regular rotation player. He's a fun guy. Oh, Not he is. jumps out of the gym, got a fun personality. Five championships in seven seven years for Christian. 22. Huh? I mean, he's 22 years old. What an incredible it's all moment good. for him. He, he, I, I don't remember being fitted for the championship belt back when I was 22. I wish I wish I had. It took me a little longer to get to a championship in, in my sport. But Christian Brown, he's, he's, he's advanced. <laughs> he's advanced, advanced duty. <laughs> Let's talk about the owners, the, the Cronkies. They are big basketball guys. They love basketball. And this has been quite a championship run the last 15 months for them. Well, they're both big basketball fans. And this is under the Cronky ownership. Vic said it best a little bit earlier. Uh, they have put together Stan Cronky, Josh Cronky, the Super Bowl champion LA Rams back in 22. The lacrosse champion, Colorado Mammoth, a little bit later, a couple months later. Stanley Cup champion, Colorado Avalanche, who I say a very similar run to the Nuggets. Weren't quite sure they could do it, but they did it. How about Arsenal finishing second in the Premier League? That's a tremendous accomplishment, and so on and so forth. And that looks like my buddy, Michael Malone, walking careful, carefully Michael. at the top of the fire truck. Michael, come on down. <laughs> come on down, Michael. We are ready for this rally to get started, and it is going to happen right after this break. fan has now made it here to Civic Center Park as we await the rally. Take a look at this. Mayor Michael Hancock getting his jersey signed by none other than Super Mascot Rocky. That is just incredible. Chris, uh, you think that's going to make it on eBay or is that going to be framed in his house? I think he keeps that. You remember Vic Lombardi a little bit earlier in the show talked about back in the day when the Nuggets were struggling. 
that Rocky was the most valuable nugget, the most uh, treasured nugget, the most admired nugget. Of course, now with Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray on the scene, he's not. But what a, an important member of the Nugget Society he is. And, uh, you know, I wish I had a, a Rocky signed jersey. That I would be cool. I gotta get one before I leave. <laughs> well, let's talk about this incredible postseason and the record that Nikola Jokic has made. I mean, he, we talk about he's an incredible player, but he really is the first in NBA history to do some of the things that he's done this postseason. Yeah, and to do this in postseason, it's another wake up call. Nikola Jokic is great at this stuff, piling up points, rebounds, and assists. I call it accolade padding accolade padding as opposed to statistic padding Nikola Jokic gets you numbers that you need points rebounds assists that's how you win basketball games he's such a gifted player he's a three-tier player he can score inside he can score from the free throw line he can make threes he's the most gifted passer perhaps uh, since Larry Bird and Magic Johnson he rebounds the basketball. There you see him going by Anthony Davis, one of the best defensive players in the league. You need a big shot from outside. He makes it. And I think you mentioned a little bit earlier how Nikola Jokic does it. How does he keep doing it just when you think he can't possibly make a shot? It's running down, and he, he's guarded, and he's turning, and he throws it's it in. It's jaw-dropping. And it is amazing what he can do. It's unbelievable. And, you know, he's done some unbelievable things with Jamal Murray as well. This They play some incredible two-man basketball out there. Jamal Murray, what a redemption story as well. Coming back from injury, knee surgery, thought he was going to be cut. We saw him thanking Stan Kroenke uh, when they won the NBA championship uh, on Monday for keeping him. Imagine not having him. I mean, he has been an integral part of this team. Yeah, he's all the way back. He doesn't like the Bubble Murray reference, so we won't say that. But three years ago, Jamal Murray was on an all-star, all-NBA track after the bubble experience with COVID. And then he tore up his knee. And it took him two years to come back. He wanted to make sure that he was going to be at his best. And he mentioned, he mentioned at the start of the season against Utah in the opening game, he was afraid to drive into the lane because he wasn't sure how he was going to land. So fast forward six, eight months. Here we are, sea of humanity everywhere, <laughs> getting ready to celebrate. Not only Nikola Jokic, but Jamal Murray and the rest of the Denver Nuggets, their coaches. It's just been a fantastic journey for him. And I hear that Coach Michael Malone has made it here to Civic Center Park. It took him a while. He was out well, in the crowd with the fans, high-fiving everybody. Well, he's, he's on foot. Yeah. He's on foot now, I think. <laughs> he, he brought his walking he was... shoes today. <laughs> <laughs> and hey. his dancing shoes, apparently. Uh, let's uh, listen in with Chris Dempsey and Coach Michael Malone. I'll talk about the moment you just had uh, alone on the top of that truck. Um, kind of looked like reflecting on everything. Sorry. You know what's funny about this? <laughs> Jared Bedner, coach of the Avalanche, told me, that, I said, when did it hit you? He said, at the parade. And uh, he's hitting me right now. And two. And, and uh, for me, I'm sorry. Take your time. For me, to share it with our fans, that means the world to me. Uh, this is an amazing experience. Something that I believed in. I had no doubt that we'd get to this point. I had no doubt because of the people I work with every day. From, from Josh and Stan Kroenke to Calvin Booth in his front office from my coaching staff, and most importantly, the 17 plays in that locker room. So for me, just taking the time to reflect and own the moment. Life's about moments. 
It is. Life's about moments. And what we just accomplished, 47 years in the making. And I just am so happy, not for me, not for our players, but for our fans. We have people that have been supporting this team for 47 years. And so to those fans for 47 years, I just want to say thank you for being patient. Thank you for believing in us. And thank you for enjoying this journey, this process. Because we couldn't have done this without you. So, Nuggets Nation, I love you. And uh, I got a crazy idea, man. <laughs> I got a crazy idea. I'm kind of crazy. I'm a little bit emotional. Let's do this shit again. Yes. Let's do this again. I want to be on another float. I want to come down to the fucking parade. I'm sorry for my language, excuse me. And experience this again because this city, these fans, this franchise, they deserve that. So let's go, Nuggets. I love you guys. And uh, let's go celebrate. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you. What a wow. moment. Wow. I asked at the beginning of the show how Coach Michael Malone was going to react seeing all of these fans out here. Chris, that's the first time I've seen him that emotional. Yeah, certainly an emotional roller coaster for Michael Malone. Of course, when he got here, the fan base was not built up. Uh, the Nuggets were a good team, but not a great team. And you just saw it today, what he goes through, how much the Nuggets coaches, uh, front office, the trainers, all the people, weightlifting coaches, they put into this. And to see the Nuggets get to the end of the road. We kept saying on the air, hey, there's the finish line. The finish line it's, is there. We're almost, almost there. there. I can touch it. And finally, this is the day that it finally, the reality hits for Michael Malone. Good to see him, a terrific coach and a wonderful person. The day is here. History is made. No one is going to forget this day. It is just an absolutely beautiful celebration out here with so many fans. Uh, let's go to Micah Smith with some of those fans down at Civic Center Park. Hey guys, we are so squished into our little media area because there are so many people out here that I'm literally up against the fence, but I found three amazing fans right here. This is Chris, Jeremiah, and Cam. Chris, I want to start with you. Why do you love the Denver Nuggets? I don't know. Okay, not not quite sure, but we do love your jersey. We do. Okay, Jeremiah, you tell me what has been your favorite part of the series. We'll bring you up a little bit closer. You know, just watching the team and how they, the camaraderie and the fun they're having out there, the command they have on the floor. It's been a magical season, and obviously we have the MVP of the league. So, um, finals MVP. It's been a blast watching it with the kids and just all the excitement and energy. I mean, the crowd is equal to the Broncos parades and the Avalanche that we've been to. So it's been great. It's been absolutely great. Cam, it is your turn, your message for Nuggets Nation. You're starting five about to be on the stage. What would you like to say? Um, I just love every play. They're just like so exciting to watch. They're, it's just, they make it look so easy. They make it look easy. Okay. Anything else that you three would like to say about the parade, the celebration, this rally about to happen? Beautiful day and uh, go Nuggets, right guys? Go nuggets. Let's go Nuggets! Go Nuggets! Oh. Yes, All right, you heard it here again. The best crowd at the back of Civic Center Park having an absolutely great time. Check out the shirts. They're all ready to show you their gear. You know, I have to say, I'm impressed with these old school jerseys, these new school jerseys, the NBA Champs t-shirts. We've got all of the Nuggets gear on full display. I'll send it back to you. Oh, they're bringing out all the good stuff, the vintage, the new stuff, the championship gear. I love it. And if you're wondering why this rally hasn't started, take a look at the screen to your right. They actually had to put Nicole Jokic and Jamal Murray in a SWAT vehicle. The fire truck could not make it here. They, I, that's a wild ride for them. I don't, I don't think they expected that one. Yeah, they couldn't make the turn because the fans were jammed in. What a, what an adventure for the fire trucks trying to make it here. And now the SWAT mobile. I thought they maybe got pulled over and maybe checking some IDs on those fire trucks to see what see what's going on. A little too much on. celebrating. A little too much champagne pop out there. I wonder if the champagne's still flowing in the SWAT vehicle. I do see the Larry O'Brien trophy, though. <laughs> you know, I, I, I think 
if, if, if I'm coaching the Denver Nuggets right now, I say, Nicola and Jamal, grab the two trophies and get out and run. Let's get this show on the road. I mean, this shot is unbelievable. You see Nikola Jokic, he's got the MVP trophy. He's out of the, like, manhole on the yeah. top of his SWAT vehicle, still celebrating and waving to fans. Jamal Murray, he's got the Larry O'Brien trophy, and he's hanging on for dear life on, this, on the top of this SWAT vehicle. And this is not what we were expecting uh, during this parade, but uh, it's certainly whatever we got to do to get them here, we will do it. I know uh, Denver police working hard out there. We thank them for uh, all the crowd control. Well, certainly the show must go on here at the Victory Parade, but the show really doesn't go on without Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray. So we wait until they get here. They're on a slow approach, crawling along, to where this sea of humanity is going to erupt. I can imagine these two are so close. This is one of those stories they're going to tell, you know, 10, 20 years from now yeah. to their kids and their families riding on the SWAT vehicle into the NBA championship victory yeah. parade. It's going to be, Daddy, what happened to the fire truck you were on? Well, <laughs> we lost it halfway there. Sorry about that. They don't seem to mind. They're still waving. They're, they're still excited. We are waiting for this rally to get started in about 10 minutes. Until then, we are going to take a quick break and keep celebrating with the fans out here at Civic Center Park.